OK, so now we get to see the next big unit system. So the AU was mainly used for planetary distances. The next unit system is called the light year. <coughs> the light year, LY, is the symbol for it. It stands for the distance that light travels in one year. So the light year is a unit of what? Distance. This is often a question that astronomy professors love to put on the test. Not, not necessarily that I would put, but some other person might put it. They'll say, the light year is a unit of what? And then A will be time, B will be speed, C will be distance, D will be mass, E will be volume, right? And they want to see, they want to throw you off, right? The light year is a unit of, let's say, speed, time, distance, mass, volume. The correct answer is distance. A lot of students will put this one, speed. About 30% of the students will put speed. Maybe about 30% will put time. And then the other 30% will put distance. Maybe some that just don't know it might, might put mass or volume, you know. Um, so why are, why are the students putting speed? Why are some other students putting time? Yeah, you see, the thing is this. The light year is the distance that light travels if it goes at the speed of light for one year. So inside of the definition of the light year, you already have speed and time. You see? You see the equation D is velocity times time? It's the, the light year is the distance that light travels when it goes at the speed of light times one for a duration of one year, you see? So the reason why students get that wrong is inside of the definition, there's already the concept of speed, and there's already the concept of time. So that's why some of the students put speed, some of the students put time, and then the dis correct one is distance, you see? So it's not a unit of time or speed. It's a unit of distance, but it, the distance is measured as the distance that light travels in one year. You see? So what is the usefulness of it? Writing distances to stars and also stating the sizes of galaxies. When we get to bigger things, AU is no longer helpful. You see? It stops being helpful. Oh. OK, how big is the light year? 9.5 times 10 to the 12 kilometers. <laughs> That's how uh, huge, huge distance. One light year, 9.5 times 10 to the 12th kilometer. And then one mile, remember, from Monday is 1.6 kilometer. So if you divide this by 1.6, you get this. So if you want to quickly remember it, somebody stops you on the street and asks you, how big is the light year? Uh, just approximately 5.9 is approximately 6, right? 10 to the 12 is a trillion. So one light year is 6 trillion miles. That's how, how to remember it quickly. One light year is 6 trillion miles. How, how big was the AU? The AU was 93 million miles. 93 million. Which one is a bigger unit? Oh, yeah. Trillion versus million. Trillion is 10 to the 12. Million is 10 to the 6th. It's not even close. 
a light year is much, much, much bigger, you see. If we want to know how many AUs go inside of a light year, we divide them. And it ends up being 63,000. So one light year, when you divide this, you get 63,240 AUs. Well, you see here, uh, pl uh, Planet X is 67 AUs away from us. Is that close to a light year? 67 AU? No, you got to go 63,000 AUs to get to a light year. So, I mean, keep going, keep going, counting, counting, you know, go to 100 AU, then finally go to 1,000 AU, go to 10,000 AU, 100,000, uh, you know, well, no, 63,000 AU, and then you'll stop, and that's one light year, you see. So definitely, if you want to go one light year, you got to get out of our solar system. You got to keep going, you got to keep going, you got to keep going in the middle of empty space, and eventually you get to one light year. Okay, since we said that the light year's usefulness is to write down the distances to stars, let's state what is the distance to stars. So we look at a different table now, table C5 and C6. Okay, table C5 shows you that the table, the title of the table is called Our Nearest Stars, the nearest stars to the sun, okay? Table C5. Nearest stars. The very first one on that list is the sun. Okay, well, that's, that's a star. You know, so the, the distance of the sun, it's not even given to you in light years because it's so close, you know, it's just one AU. The next one on that list is Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri, you see, that's the one. And then the distance in light year, 4.22 light year. Wow, imagine that. So imagine uh, one light year was how many AUs? 63,000. Four light years is gonna be how many AUs? 63,000 times four, 240, 250,000. So you gotta literally go 250,000 AU to get to the closest star beyond the sun, okay? Uh, that's a huge distance. So remember, on Monday we kind of mentioned about the light year also, what does that mean? Well, there's two ways to um, understand this. One way is to say, when you see that star, you are seeing it as it was four years ago, you see? Because the light that leaves that star and travels to you is traveling at the speed of light. Right? So if it takes the light to come to you four years, because it's traveling at the speed of light, right? So it's going to take four, literally four years for it to come to you. So by the time you see it, it's already four years old. You see? So you're seeing the past of that star. You're seeing the star as it was four years ago. The other way to see it is if you get in a rocket and you travel there near the speed of light, it takes you four years to get there, okay? Now, our spacecrafts that we sent to Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, you know, those spacecrafts are called Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Pioneer, uh, Pioneer uh, 1 and 2. Um, I believe, no, Pioneer 10 and 11, I think. Those are, have all left the solar system, right? But are they going anywhere near the speed of light? No, they're going pretty fast, but nowhere near the speed of light. So they are now passing the solar system. Let's say they have enough battery life and they just keep traveling. How many years do you think it's going to get them, take them to get to that star? We'll be dead by then. Don't worry about it. Okay. 
It's going to take many, many years for that, those satellites to even get to the nearest the star. They're going to be basically in empty space for thousands of years, OK? Because they're not traveling anywhere near the speed of light, you see? So, but light, since it goes much faster, it takes four years. OK, the other one on that list, next one, as a matter of fact, Alpha Centauri. And it's 4.4 uh, light years. You see? So Proxima Centauri, even though it is the closest, uh, by the way, to remember that, word, think of the word approximate. So it's the most approximate closest to us. Okay? Proxy means kind of close. That's the way to remember that. However, Proxima Centauri is not a very bright looking star. If you try to find it in the sky, good luck. It's going to be very dim. But the one that really is visible at night, Alpha Centauri, you can actually see it. It is a very bright star. So this will be the first star that you can actually see with your naked eye without the use of a telescope. It's a pretty bright looking star. OK, now if you go down that list, I didn't put all of them there because I don't necessarily need you to memorize all of those. There's other ones on that list. Barnard Star, Leland, Sirius A, Sirius B, Epsilon, Ross, Cygni, and so on and so on, Epsilon, Tau Ceti, uh, Cougar. So basically, when you go down that list, the distances are getting bigger. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So the reason I'm listing this one is because it happens to be the last one on that list. And, and then what that means is by the time you get to 13, AU, uh, 13 light years, that kind of you're done with our neighborhood of stars. Okay, That's our neighborhood. Once you pass that, then you're going to start getting to empty space again. And then after that, other stars are going to start coming. You see? So then we go to the next list, C-6. Okay? C-6 is called the visually brightest stars. OK? So let's erase this one. OK, so it's visually brightest In other words, this table is telling you this is some of the most brightest stars that you're going to be able to see at night when you go out and view the sky. So it's not only showing you the neighborhood of stars, but it's showing you any stars beyond that. And they're really bright. What are some of the distances there? Well, some of them are 8 light years away from you. Some of them are 313. Vega, 25 light years, 42, 773 light years. So it kind of, kind of all over the place. One of the, ones I, one of the ones in that list is Sirius A. Eight point six one light years away. Now notice Sirius A should actually be in both tables. Why? Not not only is it one of the brightest stars in the sky, as a matter of fact, it happens to be the brightest looking star in the sky. The brightest looking star, Sirius A. Not only is it one of the brightest looking star, but it also should be in our neighborhood, right? How do I know it should be in our neighborhood? It's from 4 to 13, right? Anything from 4 to 13 is our neighborhood, you see? So it's pretty close, and it's, the brightest, it's also in this list. It's the brightest uh, star in that list. Uh, some of the other ones in there, Betelgeuse. Of course, you remember the movie with that name, Betelgeuse. This is also a famous star.
next, in the next lecture when we talk about constellations, and I'll tell you about the Orion constellation, Betelgeuse is at the armpit of Orion. The, literally, the name Betelgeuse means that. So it should be visible in winter months. So in February, uh, right now we're in February, it should be visible at night. Look at the constellation Orion uh, and uh, the hunter. The armpit of Orion is Betelgeuse. It's a, a red supergiant star, very bright, very, very bright. And its distance from us, roughly around 427 light years. Okay, so now you're talking this bigger stuff. Now, if you keep going down that list, you're going to see some that are 700 light years, and you're going to see some that are 50 light years. But the farthest one that I see, and it's good to know that one too, in that list, the farthest one that I see is Daneb, 3,000. Uh, for in this table, it says it's uh, 3,230 light years. And I wrote 3,000 light years, but roughly it's about three, just remember it as 3,000. So that takes us, so what that roughly means is out of the stars that you see at night, visually, without needing a telescope, the one that's the furthest is Daneb, 3,000 light years away. Now, imagine how bright it must be in order for you to, to still be able to see it without needing a telescope. It's 3,000 light years away, so it's got to be really, really bright, okay, for you to not need a telescope. So that, that tells you that's the limit, 3,000 light years. So if you look at this picture here, Maybe if you can do the light, the last, the left, the left two, the left two of them. Was that, or maybe the right two? Okay, that's fine. And then we can just turn it back on. So uh, what this one is showing you is the the Milky Way galaxies right here, roughly. And you got the sun here. So there's, you can imagine as if there is this sphere around us. And the, di uh, the, the radius of that sphere is 10 to the third light years, the radius of it. You see, 10 to the third is how many? A thousand, right? So thousand this way, thousand that way, thousand this way, thousand this way, thousand this way, thousand this way. So all the stars that we just wrote down, Sirius was eight light years, right? Kruger was 13 light years. Uh, Betelgeuse, 400 light years. Where are, where are they located in the Milky Way? If up to a thousand light years. They're all located in that area. So basically, they're all somewhere here. You know? Our neighborhood is like right next to us. You know, all, those are all the stars that are in, right next to us. And then those other ones that I named are basically all right here. Uh, the only one that's kind of outside of that is uh, Daneb. Remember, that was how many? 3,000. So if this is 1,000, 3,000 might take you somewhere here. One, two, three, and then that's Daneb. It's bright enough for you to see without needing a telescope. So all of these other things, they're too far away for you to see without needing a telescope. So that, that's why you buy a good telescope. The telescope allows you to see all these things, all these things. Uh, the, the, the problem is, if you try to view this way, this dust here is going to get in the way. So these ones you won't be able to see, even if you have a telescope, you know. 
And then, of course, there are stars over here and here. And then there's other galaxies. The, galax uh, this, uh, the telescope allows you to see those other galaxies and things, you know. But this is the arena within which we can see all the things. So what they do here is they say, within 10 light years of us, if you do like a little sphere, within 10 light years of us, these are how many stars there are. This is kind of like our uh, neighborhood. Remember we said Kruger was uh, thir 13 light years? So this is our neighborhood. Then if you get bigger, this one fits in here. Within uh, 100 light years of us, there's 10 to the fourth stars. So there's 10 stars within 10 light years. Within 100 light years, there's 10 to the fourth. So that's 10,000 stars. And then that little thing fits in here within 1,000 light years. How many stars? 10 to the seventh stars. That's 10 million. What does that mean? In this little space, there's 10 million stars. <laughs> That's, to me, that is just amazing. I can't fathom it. I can't put it in my brain, you know. That little area has 10 million stars. Of course, most of them are too dim. We can't see them, you know. So that, that thing right there, all that 10 million is there. But out of those 10 million, you could probably see with your naked eye roughly 2,000 of them, 1,000 to 2,000, you know. But the, one of the brightest ones is Deneb, and that, the Deneb is, is even outside of that. All these other ones, you need telescope for, okay? So this gives you a good idea of where all these stars fit in the overall scheme of things, you know, in our galaxy. Amazing, amazing, you know, just...